Hello viewers, in today's class we are going to discuss uh, an important application of uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem, right? And here uh, we have a very nice problem uh, in which uh, we are given a function f of x which is continuous in the closed interval a minus h, a plus h and uh, it is uh, derivable in the open interval a minus h, a plus h then we have to show that uh, f of a plus h minus f of a minus h is equal to uh, h times f prime of a plus theta h plus f prime of a minus theta h where theta is a real number uh, which lies between 0 and 1, right? So this is uh, one of the most uh, important problems as far as uh, uh, the application of Lagrange's mean value theorem is uh, concerned, right? So let us start. So let us uh, first quickly see the statement of Lagrange's uh, mean value theorem, right? So Lagrange's mean value theorem says that if we have a function y is equal to f of x, which is defined in some interval a comma b and this function satisfies uh, two conditions uh, first one is this function is continuous uh, in the closed interval a comma b and uh, this function is differentiable uh, in the interval a comma b so this is the open interval right so if we have a function y is equal to f of x defined in some closed interval a comma b and if this function is continuous in the interval a comma b and differentiable in the open interval a comma b uh, then there exists uh, a point uh, x is equal to c which lies in the interval a comma b right so c lies between a and b uh, such that the derivative of this function at this point uh, that is f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a right so this is the uh, statement of Lagrange's mean value theorem so now see here uh, we are given a function f of x right so let us take y is equal to f of x and uh, the interval is given as a minus h and a plus h, right? And this function is uh, continuous in this interval and derivable in this open interval a minus h and a plus h, right? And we have to show uh, this statement, right? So what we will do? Uh, will apply Lagrange's mean value theorem uh, to this function, right? So what we will do, I uh, will split uh, this uh, interval uh, in two parts, right? Suppose here we have a minus h and here we have say a plus h, right? And here we have say a, right? So here uh, let us split this interval into two intervals. First one is from a minus h to a. The second one is from a to a plus h. So we have first interval a minus h to a and the second one is from a to a plus h, right? So let us call this interval as i1 and this interval as i2. And let us call this whole interval uh, from a minus h to a plus h as the interval i, right? And we can see that uh, i1 and i2 are both uh, the subset of this interval i, right? Okay. So i1 and i2 are a subset of this in the interval i, right? Now our next aim uh, is to apply uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem uh, to these two intervals. So let us first take the interval i1, right? So here we have a minus h and a. Now let us uh, apply the conditions of Lagrange's mean value theorem to this function in this interval, 
right so uh, it is already given that fx is continuous in this uh, entire interval and since i1 and i2 are uh, subset of this uh, interval i so f of x is continuous in the interval a minus h a right and f of x is uh, derivable in the interval a minus h and a right because f of x is given to be continuous and derivable in the entire interval right so uh, f of x uh, satisfies the two conditions of Lagrange's mean value theorem, right? So Lagrange's mean value theorem says that there must exist some point between a minus h and a, right? So let us call that point as c1, right? So uh, c1, x is equal to c1, uh, it belongs to the interval a minus h a such that uh, f prime of uh, c1 is equal to f of uh, b so for b we have a right so we have f of a minus f of a minus uh, f of a minus h divided by a minus a minus h that is difference of b and a so here uh, for b we have a and for a we have a minus h right so we can now write it as f of a minus f of a minus h divided by uh, h right because a and a get cancelled and minus minus becomes plus right so now uh, we have c1 uh, which uh, lies between uh, a minus h and a right now let us uh, consider uh, this interval uh, i2 right so i2 is uh, a to a plus h right and uh, we can uh, similarly uh, make arguments that f of x is continuous in the interval uh, a and a plus h because i2 is again a subset of i right and in the interval i uh, this function is uh, continuous and derivable right so f of x is also uh, having the derivative in the interval open interval a and a plus h right so this is a and this is a plus h so by uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem, uh, if we apply uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem to this interval i2, then there must exist some point, say c2, uh, belonging to this interval a, a plus h, where c2 lies between a and a plus h, such that f prime of c2 is equal to f of b, for b we have now a plus h. So a plus h minus f of a and in the denominator we have a plus h minus a. So f prime of c2 is now equal to f of a plus h minus f of a uh, divided by this a and this uh, a get cancelled. So we are left with h, right? So now viewers, let us concentrate on this inequality and this expression and similarly uh, this inequality and this expression right and now uh, let us take this inequality that is uh, theta is a real number uh, such that it lies between 0 and 1 so now just for the sake of convenience we have uh, uh, rewritten uh, these inequalities and these two expressions right so from i1 we have obtained uh, this inequality and uh, this expression and for uh, i2 we have this inequality and this expression right and c2 is a point uh, which lies between uh, a and a plus h right okay so now uh, let us first take this expression 
So if we take h to this side, we have h times f prime of c1 is equal to f of a minus f of a minus h, right? And if we take this h to this side, uh, we can write h times f of c2 and here we have f of a plus h minus f of a right so from these two equations uh, we have obtained these two equations right now what we will do we'll add uh, these two equations so when we add uh, we'll get h f prime of c1 plus h f prime of c2 and here uh, this f of a and f of a get cancelled and we are left with f of a plus h minus f of a minus h right so now if we take h common we have f prime of c1 plus f prime of c2 and here we have f of a plus h minus f of a minus h right so now we have this equation okay now uh, we have already uh, done with these two equations now let us consider uh, these two uh, inequalities so for this uh, let us take this one so we uh, start with uh, zero less than theta and uh, here we have one so theta lies between zero and one right so now uh, what we will do, let us multiply this inequality by h, right, where h is a positive quantity. Okay, so now uh, multiplying this inequality throughout by h, we have here 0 because 0 times h is 0. Here we have theta h and here we have h, right. Now uh, let us add uh, a uh, to uh, this inequality throughout. So we have a plus 0 a and here we have uh, a plus uh, theta h and here we have a plus h, right? So we have obtained uh, this inequality, right? So what we have done, we have started with uh, this inequality that is theta lies between 0 and 1. Uh, first, we have multiplied uh, this inequality by h h is a positive quantity and it is a very very small quantity right so here we have 0 then we have theta h and h right and then we have uh, added a uh, throughout this inequality and we have got a plus 0 that is a a plus theta h and here we have a plus h right so let us call this inequality as alpha right Okay, now once again, uh, let us start with this inequality that is theta uh, lying between 0 and 1, right? So let us multiply this uh, equation uh, by minus h, right? So in this case, uh, let us multiply uh, this, uh, this inequality by minus h and uh, h is uh, again a positive quantity. So minus h is a negative quantity. So when we multiply this inequality by minus h, the direction of the inequality get reversed, right? So we have 0, then we have minus theta h, and here we have minus h, right? So let us rewrite this inequality as minus h, and here we have minus theta h, and here we have 0, right? So this and this inequality are same. Uh, we have just rewritten this inequality in this form right okay now uh, add a throughout this inequality so adding a throughout this inequality we have a minus h then we have a minus theta h and here we have a plus 0 a right so now we have obtained this inequality and let us call this inequality as beta right so now uh, let us compare this inequality uh, with this one, right? So here we have a minus h less than c1 and this is c1 is less than a, right? So if we compare this inequality with this one, here we have a minus h, here we have a, right? So c1 is equal to 
a minus theta h right and similarly if we compare uh, this inequality that is a less than c2 and this is less than a plus h with this inequality so here we have a here we have a this is c2 this is c2 and this is a plus h right so c2 can easily be written as uh, a plus theta h right so comparing this inequality with this one we have obtained c1 is equal to a minus theta h and comparing this inequality with this one we have obtained c2 as a plus theta h right so now uh, let us uh, substitute these values of c1 and c2 in this expression right so we have h and we have f prime of c1 c1 is a minus uh, theta h and then we have uh, f prime of c2 so this is f prime of c2 is a plus theta h and this is equal to f of a plus h minus f of a minus h right so this is the uh, desired uh, expression which we have to prove right so viewers this is how by making use of lagrange's mean value theorem uh, we can prove or we can solve this problem right so the important thing about this problem is that uh, we have to split this uh, uh, interval uh, into two intervals right